Hey guys, Clyde here live from the Leechburg Lights uh, studio. We're working inside and doing a little uh, how-to video on setting up models in X-Lite Nutcracker. Um, what I wanted to show you was, and, and I want to tip my hat to John Storms, he's already created this video and he did a great demo and I wanted to show you uh, my take on it for my Mega Reef. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Microsoft Excel and uh, if you don't have Excel, that's okay because you, uh, in, a, in, a little, in a little while I'll show you the, the free program I found to uh, that you can use to do the exact same thing. With that being said, we've got uh, rows and columns here and we're going to click on the column header and we're going to drag. Uh, I'll, I'll go out, I don't know, about this far. I don't know how many pixels that's going to be. And then we're going to resize by clicking and dragging. See how my arrow is, uh, I have arrows to the left and right. I just selected in between the columns there and I'm dragging this to make it skinnier. That made all of these columns skinnier. And now I have these nice little squares, which I'm going to use as my grid for uh, building my um, for building my um, uh, model for the wreath. So before we get started, I'm going to do some quick calculating. And I love Excel for calculating. So my, my wreath is going to have 63 pixels total. And there's going to be three rings in the wreath. So it's pretty much, it's kind of a circle matrix. So what we need to do is we need to take 63 and divide it by uh, three and we find that we have 21 pixels per circle. We can divide 21 by three. And what that does is that uses three of our pixels. So 21 uh, divided by three, well, actually we'll do this first. We'll take 21 and we'll subtract out three We'll hit 20, plus 21 minus 3 is equal to 18. This is how many we have left. We are going to start with 3, and then we have 18 more to insert into each one. And now, if we have three segments, we'll, we'll divide our circle up into three segments as, as we go on. This will make a little more sense. I have 18 segments that need to be divided into three uh, segments. And we'll take 18, obviously 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. So each segment's going to get 6 pixels per segment. So what uh, me doing all of this ahead of time kind of helps you uh, know how I'm going to set up my pixel wreath. The next steps, we're going to go to insert and we're going to click on shapes and we're going to select the oval tool and it didn't select it very good. Let, let me go back in there, shapes, oval tool, and see how it has crosshairs for my pointer. I'm gonna go up to my first little square here and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag and I'm gonna make the nicest circle that I can. And now we have a giant circle and it's blue. We're gonna do some formatting so that we can make this clear. And we so all we did there is we just right clicked right click on the uh, actual border of the circle and format the shape. And then we'll take this slider that says transparency. We're going to slide it all the way over here and that makes this a clear circle. Now I'm, I'm one for using the keyboard commands, control C for copy and I just hold C or you can right click and you, you can hit copy. And I come in over here and if I control V, which is paste in Excel, uh, you can you can select the paste command or you can right click and paste and I'm just going to resize this So this is a smaller circle that goes around on the inside. You can you can notice um, that we have uh, two rows and these represent rows for the pixels now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add my third circle because now I have three rows and we're going to click on the corner and drag and make this smaller. And now I will say this, it takes time to make this wreath like as perfect as you want it. We are going to have 20 to 21 uh, pixels per line. And how I'm going to start it is right here in this area. This is going to be my pixel number one of each row. So this is the first row. This is the second and then the third row. And I always start in the middle here, I don't know why. 
but that's where I chose. And I'm going to put my first row of pixels right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the insert column or button again and click on shapes and I'm going to select this line tool. And when I click on it, I see I have crosshairs and I'm going to just go right here to the top and click and drag straight down and create a line. This signifies my first pixels. Now what I'm going to do is click outside of the circles, scroll over, and I'm just going to, just for the heck of it, I'm going to type the number 1 here. Let's go back over here and do a little bit of math. So we have uh, the first row is going to be pixel 1 through 21, and then we're going to have 22, and then what's our last pixel in the line? Plus 22, plus, let's see, what is it? It's 20, 20 pixels would be 42. So the second row of pixels will be, uh, the first will be 1 through uh, 21, second one's 22 through 42, and then 43 through 63, I believe. Actually, I think that's wrong. How about 43 and 44? There we go. So this would be pixel number one right there. And then we'll come up here and where this intersection is, that's going to be a number. So this will be pixel number 22, and this here will, this top one here will be pixel number 44. Actually, 43. This is. We're going to continue around and we're going to draw out. Remember, I said we're going to do three segments. We're going to split the circle into three segments insert, shapes, line. Because you can't take 23 and divide it in half equally, it would be a lot easier to do that. There's, uh, there's, there's two of three, and then we'll go back to insert and go back to that line tool, and this is number three. This is our initial setup of the pixel wreath. Out of the 21 pixels per line, we've used three of them so far, and that leaves us with our 18. So now per segment, here's our segments. This is segment one, segment two, and segment three, if you will. We're going to put six dividers into here six lines and make it as even as possible. That way when we create our effects in Nutcracker we have a nice even circle using the number 21. So now I'm just going to go in we're going to make uh, our six pixel strings lines into each of our segments. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six and seven so if we have one two three four five six seven this is one segment we'll continue on down All right, there's the second segment there. And as you can see, if you are following, if you're jumping ahead of yourself, you're starting to realize everywhere you put a line, that's where a number goes. And that will that number signifies a pixel. can take your time and re-space these all out. You can make this look pretty if you want, make it look a little closer. The uh, The whole idea though with uh, x Lights Nutcracker is the model will tell the pixels when to turn on and off. Let's say this is good enough. Everywhere you see an intersection, you're just going to put a number. So I know this is my pixel number one, pixel number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and <laughs> this is a very long process. So once you have this done, then you have a very easy, and I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll switch over to the uh, spreadsheet that I've already created to save some time. I've already gone through and done the uh, process here, 
and you can see 1920 it's 22 is your next pixel and then 43 is your last pixel up here and you just continue to make your intersections go up to the top of the the top square here we're going to click and drag and we're going to copy now the next after this we are pretty much done with Microsoft Excel we're going to go into Nutcracker now and have it turned on, uh, set up, and I'm going to go into the preview tab. And you can see I've already got some models here. Uh, this, the, the way this is set up here, I already have uh, created the models, but we're going to go through the process of actually setting up the models. So go into models, click on the model tag, and then we're going to go to new. And next we're going to create a brand new model. And we're going to call this uh, Mega Pixel Wreath. And we're going to change the display type as custom. And we see this come up and it kind of looks like our grid squares on uh, Excel. And then we're, we have the option here to leave this as RGB. And that's what we'll do. We're going to make the model, uh, let's say, 45 by 45. And what that does is that that creates, uh, over here, I'll make this bigger, that creates our grid. And the new version of this program, actually, you can zoom out and you can see more of the whole grid so you can see your setup. Now, the uh, last thing we have to do is we have to insert our copied information from um, our Excel file, which is here. We copied this. Uh, circle uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the start channel and we're going to click enter and as you see it auto filled all of the locations of the pixels right into the the grid and that's this is really a nice feature I'm glad they added this um, the prior version didn't have it so now we're going to click OK and we've just created a brand new uh, model in the model list it says megapixel wreath GECE we're going to click OK. Up on the screen here, we have we have a brand new a brand new wreath, and you'll notice that it looks identical to this. Um, I could go back and do some formatting and make this a little bit more pretty, but that would take some time. The other thing you see here is this other uh, pixel. Um, uh, Want to call this a matrix? And this is set up using the same channel numbers as this wreath is here. So the if I if I make this wreath bigger, we know that right here was my first pixel, second, third, fourth, that was the beginning of the second row and this is the beginning of the third row. I'm creating a matrix using the exact same setup as this and I'm making a duplicate using the same channel numbers in the model. So we're going to go into models, we're going to create another new model. See how it says flat wreath We'll create new model and we'll call this flat wreath and we're going to go in create a horizontal matrix leave this as RGB nodes and we have if we look down here we have one two three strings and then we have 21 RGB uh, GECEs per string and then there is one strand per string and what this tells Nutcracker is there's three there's three strings. They all start on this end, this end, and this end here. And there's one, two, three with 21. Uh, the start channel will leave the exact same. We left the other one as start channel one. That way, um, these two props w uh, in, in Nutcracker, these two models, will um, output the exact same data to either or, depending on how you sequence. Now I selected uh, starting corner to be the bottom left because in the matrix it's the bottom on the left there and we'll click OK. So now we have another flat wreath 2 and if we click on it here there's our other one. So that, that walks you through the process of actually setting up this wreath or this model into Xlight's Nutcracker. Um, if I go into the sequencer tab and we uh, open and oh, there it is, right there. Uh, this is um, the file that uh, the uh, the sequence that I created uh, using Xlight's Nutcracker for uh, the GECEs. 
I really wish whenever I was up here in this tab, I could just click the home button and it would take me to the left, but I have to come down here and scroll. Um, so anyway, you can see I have added, I, by right clicking on the timing, it says edit display elements. I could come into the uh, elements, sequence elements, and I could add models to the sequence. I could add flat wreath two, and I could, I could add these two here, which aren't sequenced yet. And I can close out of it, and there's those. There's our two new re, uh, our two new um, uh, elements into Nutcracker. Now, um, pretty much this is all there is to setting up this sequence um, to add the models into X Lights Nutcracker. So that, that's as far as I want to go in this tutorial. The um, the 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 last thing I want to touch on is. Um, is how do you do this for free? And uh, there's this wonderful program. It's called uh, LibreOffice, and it's free. If you open up your Google browser here, I use Google. You can use whatever, and you type in L I B. There it is, LibreOffice. And I always go to this home LibreOffice. I click on it. And this is a free Office program. It is 100% compatible with Microsoft um, Office. A lot of the commands and a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, uh, options are the same in Office Calc. Uh, and what we'll do is uh, we can start doing the exact same setup we had done with our other wreath. I'm not going to go step by step, but it it allows you to resize the columns. You have down here on the bottom. You have your circle tool. Uh, so we're it's looking pretty much like the same thing. Um, up here it says color. I'm going to go to what about none? And there we go. We can see right through. If we click on here, can we, there we there we go. We copy it. Control C. There we go. I guess you have to click on the edge of the circle. We can copy it and then we can paste it. There's another circle and and paste and then I imagine this line tool would do exactly the same thing we could click and drag do our segments Oh, it actually holds the line tool for you. So there's one, two. I think this is absolutely awesome that you can go in and once again, just go in here and put your pixel number one, pixel number 21, 22, and then this is 43 up here. And you can just go in and you can build this exact same model using Office Libre. Now, the final thing I want to show you, and I'll bring up um, Excel here, is that I haven't done this just for um, just for my my pixel uh, wreath. I've done this for my star line. These this is a pixel star line that I run on the house. This is uh, the spinners that I had on the house last year. They were uh, 40 pixels. Now they're I believe 96 pixels this year. So I'll have to redo that. I've done my entire roof line so that it's a custom. Uh, I have everything on here and it's saved in one file. It's kind of nice that I can just go. Um, oh, and here's my, here's my pixel candy canes that I picked up uh, as well. Using this and setting up models and so forth uh, in, in Nutcracker is, is wonderful, uh, a wonderful tool. I think it's important that you see that, that Excel or the Office Calc program, I think both of them are very useful. And the other thing here, I'll, I guess I should show you this. Let me uh, go into the setup tab, and we're going to change from my current directory into my real directory. And this might take a second. This is this is my setup page here in X Lights. I'm up to 42 um, universes, and I'm not using the whole universe. You can see, whoops. And if we go to the preview tab, you can see how I was over able to overlay uh, all of my models on top of each other. Um, 
you can see there's the roof line, there's the spinners, there's my uh, left icicles. Here's this is my pixel wreath, the new one. Whoop, <laughs> is a little little. Uh, it's fun trying to play with this. You can see the two wreaths overlaid on top of each other, so I can create effects and see them dispersed at the same time. I have the window frames, the originals, and then I have there's the star line. And there's the new pixel window frame. So there's so many things that you can do with this setup. I think it's just absolutely amazing that uh, we can use Microsoft Excel or or this Office Calc program to set all of this stuff up for us. And uh, hey guys, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Send me an email, leechbarklights at gmail.com, um, or uh, you know, get a hold of me on the Facebook uh, page, Leechberg Lights. Um, or you can just uh, get on the uh, web page. I have my web page at www.leechburglights.com and you can keep up with everything over there. All right, guys, have a great one. I hope you enjoyed it.